All right, welcome everyone. Uh, last year I talked about Dart. I really was excited about the Dart programming language, but I couldn't find a compelling case, not like the case I'm going to present today, which is Flutter, based on Dart. So here I have an app that's already launched that's ran from the code that's sitting right there. This is the demo app. When you build a new app, it always puts this code in there. Now, I saved you the 30 seconds that it takes to bring this up, to go through the Xcode phase and everything, and that's the cycle normal app developers have to use. Watch what happens instead, though. Here's the app. It's very simple. It's got an FAB, and it counts. Ooh, exciting, right? But I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to say, I don't want a blue theme. I want an orange theme. I press Save. One half second later, it's reloaded. It, that's the development cycle on this. I like this plus button here, but what I really want to do is put a minus button in there too. So let, oh, let's change the structure first. It's not just color changes, it's structure changes as well. So I'm going to take out one of these text widgets, and I'm going to add count is. So I've actually deleted a widget from the tree, no problem. I want to make a minus button over here, so I'm going to put this in a column. So we're going to go down here. We're going to take this floating ad action button, and when we're going to use one of the helpers to say wrap this thing with a column. Save. Half a second later, oh, it's a column, but it defaults to the beginning of the column. i got to fix that. So I'm going to mouse over column. It shows me everything I can do. Main axis alignment is the thing I want to use. So we'll do main axis alignment. And it wants a main axis alignment and probably end. Let's see if that's correct. And save. There we go. Button's now back in the right place. I want a second button. I'm just going to cut and paste this code for the new floating action button. By the way, I'm tempting the live demo uh, gods, of course. But it's gone right four or five times, so let's see. So I'm just copying the button for now. Save. Boom. Now i got two buttons there. But the other one has to have a minus sign, so let me change this to icons remove. Save. Boom. Now we got that. Okay, now we've got to wire it up because both of these are identical buttons right now. They're both going to increment our counter. That doesn't help. So let's go into here, and we're going to take the thing that does the increment. We're going to copy-paste it. And first, it's going to complain because there's two functions with the same name. Don't worry about that. We'll fix that in a second here. I'm going to change that to decrement counter. And we also have to make it from plus plus to minus minus. If I had more time, I'd actually do it wrong and show you that I just have to fix it. Okay? We hit save, nothing changes because I didn't actually change the wiring of that button. So now we're going to go back to that minus button. We're going to change it from increment counter to decrement counter. Save. And now watch. Plus, 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 minus, minus, minus. One thing I haven't pointed out yet is notice that even though I updated the code, the state of that counter remained throughout it. You can drill down eight pages, find an error on your eighth page, change the code that's there, and hit reload, and all that state was preserved all the way up and down. I don't like those being above each other. I'm going to make this a row instead of a column. Save. Okay, boom, that's a row. And I don't like the fact that they're both the same orange color that's up here. So I'm going to go in to my floating action button, and I'm going to say floating action button can take a background color, and it takes, let's say, colors red. Save, just to make sure it hit the right one, yep. And then I want to go down here. Can you see how fun writing mobile apps could be with this? Okay, we're going to go here, and we're going to say background color. And did I also mention that it works in both iOS and Android from the same code base? And it works just like this for developing on both sides. Color's green, save. Looking good, looking good. I haven't heard the four minute gong yet, so I'm going to do one more change to it. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to change the, um, I'm going to put a little padding around it. That's a little tight for the corner there. So we're going to go to each of these. I'm going to go to my new action button. Oops, what did I say? Yes, save. Okay. Oh, what happened? Ah, see? I knew it. Just screw something up. Okay, there it is. Okay, so we're going to go to that floating action button again. Oh, there we go. But let's do a padding on one of them, and then you'll see how it works. So right here, we're going to go add padding. Oh, we can do them both. We've got time. And then go up here to this floating action button. And again, add padding. All the layout are widgets. Everything's in code. There's no hidden XML here. I'm actually changing the actual layout by changing the code. That means you can refactor it. You can factor it out. So you can make common things. You can make your own widgets. There we go. A little bit of padding. Flutter. Check it out. It's game changing. Thank you.